Hello, I am the Puppy Turtle, and something has possessed me to respond to Hatred 42. I have no idea what. But I figure why not? I mean, it'll, it'll be pretty funny, I guess. So I got the volume pretty high, and I'm not going to censor him because I'm not going to put the effort into it. So you will hear him use strong language. Warning. How you doing? This is probably going to be the last response to the puppy turtle. I'm going to hold you to that, okay, Hatred? Uh, just watched your uh, video, Crap and Bullcrap. And uh, you see, here's the thing. I mentioned the proof references in the Bible for one particular reason. Okay, you said, explain, tell me what absurdities, I'll be happy to explain them. Okay. You're about to see a spectacular example of quote mining. Um, this is a response to his response to my video. Um, the capital four issue, first off, is the claim that I didn't address the proof references and explain the comments. I went on to explain them, okay? I went on to explain why the fact that the Bible mentions crap is completely not absurd and has no business in a debate or in any kind of discussion regarding the Bible's validity. See, that's where it is. He said, first off, I'm not familiar with them. That was the whole point. You're telling somebody that you're going to explain the absurdities in the Bible, but you don't know the fucking Bible. You can't explain shit. Actually, I did explain exactly that. Your entire video, the first one you made and this one, is full of maybes and I guesses, and you're just pulling things out of your ass. No, no, I am not. Okay. I'd imagine you're getting at the resident frequencies thing, uh, which you did not address in your video, by the way, Hatred. Um, it's probably because you, you know, you can't answer it. All right, that's the whole fucking point. Now, you're looking for, uh, you say I'm looking for uh, logical fallacies, and I'm familiar with them, but I can't find all of them. Bullshit. Again, this is, really a great example of somebody twisting words. You have to be very careful when you hear an atheist quote somebody, but you don't either hear their voice, the voice of the person being quoted, or you don't see video footage of the person saying it, because they're probably twisting it just a little bit to make it fit what they want it to say. See, what I actually said was that I am studying logical fallacies. And I did make the request, I did say, that it would be helpful to me as a study tool if I could find a list of all of them. And he is, of course, now taking this out of context to make it look like I'm making excuses for why I can't study them. Okay, there are, even Wikipedia has a complete list of logical fallacies. No, it doesn't. It has about half to two-thirds of them. There are many videos on YouTube. You Google logical fallacies. They pop up videos by, like, a human. Uh, you know what? You want to read it? Fine. See this? This is Carl Sagan, The Demon-Haunted World, Science as the Candle in the Dark. Get this book. It'll be in your library. It's got all of them listed in the baloney detection kit as well as a whole bunch of other stuff that you probably really should read. I mean, you go on about hydroplate theory. That was debunked like 200 years ago. Hydroplate theory was proposed by Walt Brown. Walt Brown was not even born 200 years ago. <laughs> You're telling me that this theory was debunked before the person who proposed it was born. It, it's not possible. Bride Maiden 1, um, she's changed her channel, channel name for some reason. She has a video, several videos, completely debunking hydroplate theory. She's got like two PhDs, one in the paleontology and one in geology. 
okay? <sighs> he, he talked about, well, the mountains just rose up. Bullshit. That is not what I said. I did not say they just rose up magically, like you're trying to imply that I said, okay? I said that they rose up as a result of catastrophic plate tectonics, lubricating water under the plate, as Walt Brown puts it, that may not be the best wording, and the plates crashing together violently and raising mountains. I realize that doesn't fit your paradigm, and it's outside of your little uniformitarian box. Plate tectonics, okay? It works. It's science. It's established. Why do evolutionists and atheists think creationists reject plate tectonics? I'm so sick of hearing that. I believe that that is the mechanism that causes earthquakes. I believe it is even a mechanism that can raise mountains. It doesn't get them started. Or it could. Now, I find it hard to believe that the plate is going to push against the mountain or the other plate that the mountain is on in the specific way to make the mountain for long enough to make something as high as Mount Everest. But the idea cannot be dismissed out of hand by anything other than the fact that the Earth is proven to not be old enough. Plate tectonics. The mountains were slowly... It was Mount Everest. Mount Everest is where the plate that India resides on is crunching into the plate that China resides on. For millions of years, in the exact same way, and as these two continental plates come together, it's pushing up the mountains. It's been happening for millions of years. We can prove this. Please do. Okay? Please prove this. Don't just say, we can prove this. We know this. This is science. This is magic. We automatically know this. Why do you know it? Because you say so. You can't show me the proof of it. So anyways... Um, you know, I asked people if I should respond to you, and I, I didn't even listen. You know, the fact that it, towards the end of your video, you're saying you would be honored if Thunderfoot were to pwn you. I said that I would be honored if he would declare his fiveness. That's exactly how I put it. Declare his fiveness by giving me a stupid nickname like he did to Venom Bang X. That's what I said. I didn't say pwn. See, he could never pwn me. He could never pwn any creationist. And you want to be as big as Venom Bang X? That's the reason why you should actually be forgotten. Okay. I'm sure you want to be as big as Thunderfoot and the Amazing Atheist. You want to. I guarantee it. You would love to have as many subscribers as them. You would love to have your videos automatically get a million views. Make videos. Make videos for your buddies who will think like you do. If you're not going to actually bother to go get an education, you know, make videos for your friends. But seriously, when you talk about, well, maybe back then there was more oxygen. I didn't say maybe. I said there was. And there was. No. See, there was a period of time when there was more oxygen than now, but there were no humans. It's called the Carboniferous period. And that was when all these plants, and you had the big insects, and insects need large, large amounts of oxygen in order to get giant. And then they died in the Permian extinction. That's where all our coal comes from. The Carboniferous period, which gives it its name. And they all died out in the Permian extinction, which raised CO2 levels. After the Permian extinction is when dinosaurs came along in this very CO2 rich environment. That's why plants grow very well in a CO2 rich environment. And the plants got big, lots of big leaves. But the problem is, and they've proven this through experimentation, when plants go big to a hard, large carbon dioxide rich environment, they don't have a lot of nutrition. So animals had to eat more plants in order to get the nutrition they needed. And they need to develop bigger stomachs in order to handle the influx of more plants. And that's why dinosaurs got so damn big. The plant eaters got big first because they had to eat more plants in order to survive. And then the meat eaters got big afterwards because they had to get big enough to get the plant eaters. Okay, the KT event wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. We can prove this. There it is again. We can prove this. It's 
it's been proven. I can't link you to the proof. I can't show you the proof. I can't demonstrate it. But it's been proven because I said so. I'm going to use this opportunity to coin a new term. I call it IHIBIS. It happened anyway because I said so. Okay, now let me just completely destroy that little story you just told. Okay? So we start out with an oxygen-rich environment and big insects. You basically say that they all got wiped out in the Permian extinction, which raised CO2 levels. Okay? Now, that made plants grow bigger. Now, and then you say the dinosaurs came along, and that's when the, why they got so big. Now, there's your first problem right there. See, we know that the dinosaurs, particularly the large, enormous sauropods, have to have lived in an oxygen-rich environment. They can't have lived in a CO2-rich environment, because CO2 displaces oxygen. And we know the dinosaurs lived in an extremely oxygen-rich environment because they got 80 feet long. In general, an animal that big needs a lot of oxygen. And since oxygen is displaced, displaced by carbon dioxide, they can't have lived in a CO2-rich environment because they had the no their nostrils were the same size as a horse's nostrils. So, yeah, if they lived in an oxygen in an environment with the same amount of oxygen we have today, let's forget the Let's forget less oxygen. Less oxygen, like Hatred42 seems to be claiming here. Let's, let's just say they lived in the same air mix that we have today. They would be sucking so hard trying to get enough oxygen that they would set the inside of their nostrils on fire from the friction. They could not get enough oxygen to survive and get that big in a CO2-rich environment. That's your first problem. Your second problem is when you say that... They got big because they needed to. Okay, so for millions of years, all of the plant-eating dinosaurs died until one of them evolved enough size to eat the plants. And then for millions of years, all of the meat-eaters died in order to have enough time pass to get big enough to eat plant-eaters. Millions of years, it all died. They died for millions of years until they could live. And then began the age of mammals. Millions and millions of years, evolution has been solidly documented. If you want to be retarded, fine. He said, I'd be surprised at how many of you young earth creationists there are. I'm not. Forty percent of the United States believes like you do. That's why we are about to fall behind in the world. That's why most of the world considers Americans to be retarded. Because of people like you. I love how you're venting and blaming every problem with this country on a 14-year-old child. We will not retain our superpower status because of people like you. You are what makes me shame to be American, really. You are intentionally ignorant. You are intentionally misguided. You have the opportunity to learn and you throw it aside for your Bible, which is incorrect. There is no science in the Bible. You cannot learn science from the Bible, and most, if not all, biblical scholars agree. I wonder if that's why the Bible says to test everything and hold on to the good. That is the scientific method, mentioned as a, an effective way to find truth in the Bible. We're being misled by a fucking cult. But it's your life. Enjoy it. Now, because... Because you demonstrated yourself to be so morally challenged with that little cursing rant and insult rant you did against me during the last minute or so of your video, I feel like you should be commemorated for that. So I'm giving you something. I, I'm giving you a commemoration that I will probably give to other atheists in the future. I'm giving you... The Atheistic Scumbag Award for Unfounded Bitterness and Hatred for Christians. Congratulations, Scumbag.